everybody, my name is Sarah Bridget and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below and check out my other videos that will be linked down from the description box. This week, I'm going to show you how I did my friend here Susie's makeup for an onstage event with Bill Nye. So quick backstory on all of this. Susie and I met just this past year in our graduate program here at the University of Notre Dame. And going along with that, there's an on-campus group called the Idea Center. And over the past week, they hosted a ton of different events that were specifically dedicated to innovation, entrepreneurship, and how technology can be used in all of those aspects. So with that, we had a big event with Bill Nye and Susie here was chosen to moderate that event. So yeah, yeah. so a little bit of backstory to the backstory <laughs> is that so I was selected to moderate the session for uh, Bill Nye, of course, the science guy, huge. And I was really quite nervous once I got selected because I knew that I had, there would be an audience of a thousand people, there would be big lights and stage and a, a lot of thing, moving parts. And I was nervous because I didn't, I'm not the most confident person when it comes to my makeup. And I knew that I wanted to look my best. And so knowing that I wasn't as confident, I knew somebody that was and somebody that has the credibility to do incredible stage makeup. So I turned to Sarah and I knew that Sarah has her bachelor's degree from Notre Dame in physics. And I also know how great at makeup she is. And so I asked her so kindly if she would do my makeup for this event. And she kindly said yes. And I know I learned a lot and I'm, totally blown away and amazed uh, by her talent and her ability to uh, use different products because as she was explaining to me um, the different with her physics background of course she was like the different lights and the different products they affect how it all looks and so it was really nice and graceful uh, the way she presented it to me and I know makeup can be a little intimidating so I hope that you get the same uh, out of this video and that uh, you had you have a tutorial that you can look to uh, that does a good job of explaining it because it it was for me so thank you Sarah so much for including me in your video yeah and thank you for all of the kind words you did an incredible job I'm hopefully gonna sneak in a little clip that I took from the audience and just so everybody else can see that Susie was so incredibly talented she did such a good job moderating the conversation and she just overall is super impressive and great conversation. All right, Bill. So what is the title of the book you have yet to write? Uh, I'd like to write a book about grammar. <laughs> and without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so I'm starting off with the Matte Fix Plus, and I'll spray it all over to get your face damp and ready to go. And so it dries off more quickly. So Susie, what got you interested in being a moderator for this event? Um, I got nominated and then I went through an audition process and that's how I got selected to be a moderator. But I've always been intrigued by sharing people's stories and especially an engineer scientist. It's pretty fascinating. Mm -hmm. When did you start doing makeup, Sarah? Um, I started on myself probably like late middle school. I remember, I think it was in 7th grade or 8th grade, I was in a cheerleading competition and they told us for our competition, like everybody has to wear eyeliner so that it makes your like eyes pop more and you stand out more to the judges. And that was something that I know up to that point I hadn't really done. Mm -hmm. um, I think I wore like the like cover girl powder foundation, like minimum coverage, almost nothing mm -hmm. on occasion around then, but um, I had really clear skin actually in middle school, so um, it was more just I was interested in it, but remember I had my mom put on the eyeliner for me, and I was like, I think I'm just not one of those people who can like really wear much makeup or like Mm -hmm. who can wear eyeliner because I just thought it looked so strange and it was so different from mm -hmm. what I was used to seeing my face look like. But 
through high school, I would say I got a lot more into it. And then especially by the end of high school and then early college, I was an avid makeup fan. What are you using now? Um, so this is a concealer and it's one to help with the highlights and contours for your face. So adding it in the high points to make them look brighter and fuller. And when you're picking a concealer shade, you'll want to go roughly two shades lighter than your skin tone or your foundation shade. Mm -hmm. And this helps create that difference. So your face looks a bit more dimensional. When you put on foundation, it's really nice for covering things up, but it also ends up making your face look quite flat and a little bit lifeless. So adding in um, a highlight, shade, a contour shade, um, both really help to make your face look more realistic, more dimensional. And start with a light shade and this creates a really nice base to work on. Um, it gives like a clean wash of a little bit of color um, but having a powder on on top of the eye primer helps all the other shadows to go on smoothly and to blend them. There I'm going to jump in with a fluffier brush and do a color that's a bit darker um, to create a transition shade. And essentially what a transition shade is going to do is it will serve as a nice gradient between the darker colors that we'll have and the lighter ones so there aren't any harsh lines. So I'm going in with a color that's a little bit darker um, and it's also a bit more orangey toned which works really well with your skin tone and natural undertones. And we'll use this as almost a second transition shade to help darken and define the crease a bit more, but without making too big of a jump in color, I'm going to try to make it as much of a gradient as possible. Okay, and then I'm going to go in with, again, a slightly darker shade to deepen things up a bit more. And then I'm going to go in with our second to darkest shade, and we'll concentrate this on the edges a bit more, and then I'm also going to put some on the inner corner to create a halo eye look. Anytime that you're going to be on stage and have stage lighting, it's important to take everything that you would normally do and make it a bit darker. Um, just because the lights are going to be so bright that they end up washing a lot of the color out. Mm -hmm. And one of the big things when you're doing makeup or doing things for a beauty look mm -hmm. is that the reason why we put on a lot of these colors and create all of these different shadows, layers of dimension, mm -hmm. is because naturally um, the human response to faces and being able to detect gender from faces is a face with more contrast on it, looks more feminine. Oh, okay. um, so they've actually done a study where it was literally the same photo but one of them had larger contrast between them mm -hmm. um, and asked people which face was or what gender they thought the face um, was associated with, and people for the moment had more contrast than feminine. So to make sure that we're keeping the contrast there and visible when you're on stage, you have to make them a bit more dramatic. So sometimes stage makeup looks a bit funny off screen, and when you're just standing there in person, mm -hmm. it can be a bit dark, but since the whole point of being on stage is that event on stage, that's why Mm -hmm. You go for whatever is going to look best while you're up there. Now I'm just going to go in with black on, again, the same areas that we just made dark to intensify it a bit more. And this one will keep it a bit more concentrated, going in the same spots, but not as far out. So again, we can have that nice gradual transition between colors and nothing that's going to be too stark or Thing. Cool, so now we're going to go back in to all the areas that we put the lots of powder on and we're going to dust that off so that it's not 
sitting on there for too long because it can dry your skin out a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and to do this most effectively, you'll pick up a bit more powder on the brush and that just acts almost as like a lubricant to get the powder that's already sitting there to dust away. Mm -hmm. um, you want to dust it and then also swirl. Mm -hmm. um, swirling helps make sure that there are no harsh brush lines. Um, and also just blend things in nicely. I'm going to go in with contour next and okay. again we're gonna go in a bit more heavy-handed than we normally would okay. because it's stage makeup so okay. just know that it will look fine on stage if it looks a bit much in person. Mm -hmm. And I just used the um, second darkest brown and then now the darkest brown mm -hmm. to help smoke this out a bit and put some definition under the eye. But now that that's on there, I'm going to blend out the edges. Sarah, can you talk a little bit about the importance of the brushes? I noticed that you've been using all these different ones and of course I think I have like one brush. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so when you can, I'm just interested to like learn more about the brushes and their appearance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the brushes are all designed for a different purpose, and so I'm a really big advocate of that you don't need to have a ton of brushes in your initial collection uh -huh. to learn how to do makeup. It's really helpful when you do have a lot because they do different jobs and it's easier to create a high quality look, but it's not necessary. You can manipulate a lot of brushes in certain ways to create a look. So how the contour brush that I used was a bit more narrow and tapered than the blush brush mm -hmm. is because you want to get the contour in a more specific spot. But you can take your blush brush and if you pinch the bottom of the brush, it will fan out and take on a shape that's pretty similar. So. I am a big fan of different brushes for different reasons. They are just the specific angles and way that the bristles fall create a really big difference in terms of where the product is being placed, which then can create a more precise look. Um, but that being said, work with what you have. I would recommend if you're going to be doing eyeshadow that that's one of them where since the area is so small, it's a lot harder to um, fake. It's a lot harder to take a brush and manipulate it a bit to get it to work like a more precise brush would. So I would recommend investing first in additional eyeshadow brushes, but then after that, um, the face brushes are really helpful and they do a good job of doing what they need to. Um, so I'm going to go in again with the Max Fix Plus. I'm just going to spray it all over and then fan you a bit. I'm going to hop in pretty quickly after that with highlight. Or with highlight. Um, and by spraying this on first, it gives you a surface for the highlight to stick to, which will help create a more dramatic look. And what a lot of people will do is they'll actually spray their brush itself or they'll mm -hmm. spray the highlight pan mm -hmm. but when you're doing that you're incorporating new ingredients into a product that was specifically formulated to work based on every ingredient that's in here so by introducing other ingredients to it you can um, compromise the quality oh. and its ability with the shelf life its ability to last long oh. um, so this is a better method because it still creates that strong glow that you're looking for with the highlight by applying it on a wet location rather than getting the product itself wet and compromising that. Yeah, that makes sense. And I used a bit of a wider brush here, but I'm going to go in on your nose with a more pointed brush um, to again help apply it more precisely. When you're doing those highlights, the typical way to do it is to make a little exclamation point. Mm. Cool. I love that. Mm. 
So when you're putting on your eyeliner, especially when it's a liquid eyeliner, um, you're going to want to do it in a lot of short but connecting strokes. And while it seems almost counterintuitive, it will end up helping you create a thinner line um, and help you minimize air. If you're doing it all at once, it's really easy to get slightly off track. And then if you leave it open, if you're comfortable with that, I'll just finish off the wing mm -hmm. um, because sometimes the wing can sit differently when your eyes open versus closed. So by doing it when your eyes open, it helps you know better what it will look like. That explains a lot. <laughs> Have best yeah. wings. Yeah. <laughs> or attempts at wings. Mm -hmm. So I like to go in with my same highlight shade and put it in as the eyeshadow. Um, it really helps tie the look together by creating one consistent shade and shade theme. So I'm going to throw on your lipstick really quick and then I'm going to hand it over to our other friend, Louisa, to finish up. Because I have dance rehearsal to run too. Okay. okay. Um, that's the almost finished look, um, other than lashes. So as you saw, I wasn't able to completely wrap Susie's makeup. I had to run off to dance rehearsal, but I left her with the last two steps of the routine, which were first to put on a false eyelash and then finish it off with setting spray. The setting spray in particular is really important for stage makeup because it can really quickly under the hot stage lighting melt off and it just helps to prevent any mid-show mishaps. And with the eyelashes, they're also important to help add an additional layer of dimension and color to the face, especially when there are going to be people so far away. But that is all for today's video. I will insert a picture of her final look, but I hope that you all enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to give it a like down below and if you're not already subscribed, don't forget to hit that big red subscribe button. Let me know down in the comments what step you liked most or if there was anything new that you learned. But I hope that you all are having a fantastic day. Love you all so much. Bye.